Now, last year was officially the wettest the Midlands has seen since records began. It started raining in the spring and it never really stopped. Well, as well as giving us one of the most miserable summers in living memory, it's also devastated crops in farmers' fields. And as David Gregory Kumar now reveals in tonight's Winter Watch, not even our fish are enjoying all this extra water. Tell us some more, David. Well, that's right, Nick. Uh, this extraordinary amount of extra water is causing real problems for our wild fish stocks here in the Midlands. And some of the problems the fish are now facing are quite obvious, and other problems are a bit more subtle. Well, here's one of the obvious problems, Keith the seal in the Severn. It's the deep flood water that's allowed him to get up the river and eat the fish. But this is a more subtle problem. These fields can't soak up any more rain. The water's just running straight off. It's eroding the soil and then carrying that into our rivers, where it's a real problem for fish, especially salmon. This time of year, all those sediments going into the river are going to smother where the salmon have just laid their eggs in November. Um, and that, that's going to have an impact this year, most definitely. They won't survive. So we'll definitely see lower numbers of juvenile salmon hatching out in sort of April, May time this year. But here on the Attingham Park Estate in Shropshire, they're working on solutions to help the salmon, turning their riverside fields from wheat to pasture for grazing. It's going to be organic pasture and it's going to be species-rich pasta, full of flowers, full of different grasses. And even better than that, it'll do the river good as well? Yep, it'll stop any of this soil appearing in the river. So that's good for the river because the river doesn't want soil in it. It wants nice gravels for your salmon, etc. And we want to keep our soil because that's our fertility. And it's not just salmon they're trying to help here. This pool is linked to the River Severn and it provides a refuge during flooding so smaller fish aren't just swept away by the flood water. And do they hang around in here? I wouldn't go back into the Severn if it was flooded. This seems a much nicer place to be. Well, what we've seen is that during the summer, the young juvenile fish really do like it in here because it's a, a little bit warmer and they grow a little bit faster. So the food's there. And that also provides other food for other animals as well, especially the otters. Um, the otters this time of year, when the river's in such flooding condition and going so fast, they find it difficult to feed. So they can come up here and pick up the extra snack. Just over a year ago, we were reporting on the problem salmon faced from too little water. This year, too much water could prove just as difficult. And it's not just fish. Let's broaden things out a bit. We're here at Warwickshire Wildlife Trust, and with me is Steve Trotter, who's their chief executive. Steve, we touched briefly on otters in my report. I mean, they're having a tough time, aren't they? They are indeed, and they're one of uh, the UK's great success stories for conservation. But, uh, you know, normally they're an aquatic animal, so they don't mind the floods, but they travel quite long distances and when they encounter roads normally they would go underneath them through the culverts and drains but when it's flooded they're blocked and they tend to go over the top and that's obviously when they become vulnerable to traffic and um, over the last 12 months we've had about a dozen or so otters killed on Warwickshire's roads including two just before Christmas so it's bad news. And other mammals, the water voles, they're not having a good time either. Some of your staff have seen them in trouble. Absolutely. We, the, again the water vole, we commonly know them as ratty and wind of the willows um, also an aquatic animal, and they're in serious decline across the country. And in Warwickshire, we only have a, a few that are hanging on in a few colonies. And uh, one of our members of staff, a couple of weeks ago, saw, went to see the colony in the River Anchor in North Warwickshire. And uh, some of them, the burrows were flooded, and some of them were in the trees and the bushes. And they even saw one floating off down the river on a, being swept away on a, on a branch. So uh, potentially bad news, and we're very concerned about those colonies. In, and you'll be doing a brief count what the springs. We will, yeah, we'll have a check in spring to see whether I mean, they've survived. Are there any winners here who are actually coping better with all this water? Well, as always, there are, there are winners and losers. And it, it, some birds which may have been evicted from uh, reservoirs and other places by the deep water, may actually we may actually find in spring the high water table level in the soil pushes the invertebrates and the, the worms and insects up to the surface. So perhaps in the spring, lapwing and other waders will benefit if the weather's not too bad for breeding, that is, of course. <laughs> well, the contrast last year, it's so dry. Thank you very much for that, Steve. Now, last night we were talking about waxwings. We asked for your photos, and we got lots of photos and some amazing video. This is from Phil Parsons, filmed at Hartleby Trading Estate in Worcestershire. Beautiful shots of these really greedy birds. And we've got this lovely video and all your photos now up on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash Midlands Today. Thank you so much for those. Thanks very much indeed, David. Oh, beautiful picture.